Hey guys, and welcome to an original retry this production. Today I'll be doing a game maker tutorial, teaching you about my new character select screen version two that I'm working on. So this is a tutorial teaching you how to make my new character select screen. I have a tutorial on this on this already, but this is version two, which shows you how to do it a different way if you don't like the old version. So this version is a little bit easier to do and manage. And it doesn't involve using the mouse. You'll use the left and right arrow keys to select a character and space bar to use the left and right arrow keys to move through the characters and space bar to select the character you want. So yeah. So first, you want to have a sprite with all the characters in it or sprites of the characters in it. I have four characters, so in each sub-image I should have one, one different character. This is the black character, the blue character, the orange character, and the green character. So you create a sprite with one sub-image of each of your players that you have. So here's mine. And also, this is optional. I just like adding it. I added two arrows that I have here. And these arrows, they're just used for, to show which button you press. So, yeah. So now we can begin. Let's create an object. I'll call it obj underscore character select. I don't think I have an object named character select. And give it the sprite with all the four characters in it. So let's add an event, create, control, execute code. So I'll say, so we want it to start at a sub-image zero, so it'd be the first player. So we'll say global dot character select equals zero. Image underscore index equals zero. So it starts off on sub-image zero. And image underscore speed is zero. So global dot character select is zero. We'll use numbers for each character. So zero will be character number one, or the starting character, one will be the second character, and so on. Now we're going to add an event, step, step, execute some more code. This is all code, by the way. So now we want to do the, the character, K -A, no, character sprite, character sprite, select, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to do if global dot character select this is a long word equals zero image underscore index equals zero so if it's zero then the sprite that will be shown will be the black player and then we just want to copy this control C control V add an else in front of it else if global dot character select equals one image underscore index equals one. So it'll be the next character in the list. And then we want to do this for as many characters as we have. In this case I have four, so zero, one, two. Since I have four, we only do this up to three. So this is to show the different sprites in the character select to show which character we're currently looking at. So now so if character select is equal to three, it'll show the third character, third player. I'm calling players. So if global dot character select is three, it'll show the green player. Image index equal to three. So now we want to go back to the code. Next, we want to add. Here's the fun part, the really long part. This is to control the key selects. So when we press the left or right keys, we want it to do whatever. In this case, we want to do if global dot character select. Nah, let's not start with that. Let's do keyboard underscore check underscore press, so it doesn't check if we're holding it. Visual key or VK underscore left. Open parentheses VK underscore left. And global dot character select equals zero. Open bracket. 
what we want to do, we want to say global dot character select. Now for here, we want to go back to the last number we have, or the biggest number we have. So if it's zero, we want it to go back to the last or final character, the fourth. So we want it to loop to the end. In this case, I only have up to three. So global dot character select equals three. But make sure you put in the biggest number that you have. So it'll loop back to the big end. Or it'll loop to the end. So global dot character select will be equal to three. So we can copy and paste this also. Control C. Control V. So we can do add else to it. If keyboard underscore check, visual key underscore left, and global dot character select equals one. Global dot character select equals zero. So one. So if you press it and global dot character select is one, global dot character select will come zero. So it'll go to the first player. So we want to keep copying and pasting this until we have all our characters done. Visual key left. Character select two. Character select one. And I think this is the final one. Let me think. No, it's not the final one. But yes, it is. But no, it's not. Go dot character select is three. Go dot character select is two. And since I don't have a four, we'll stop there for the left key. But now we have to manage the right key. So we can just copy and paste this again. So control C and control V. This time we're going to add a space to keep it organized. Change it to the right. So if you press the right button and global dot character select, let's start off at zero. Global dot character select will be equal to one. And now we're going to repeat the process. Dang it and copy all of it, whatever. Else. So change this to one as well. Change this to two. And we keep doing that so on and so forth. We just changed this already. I don't even know what's the point of copying and pasting that. Wait, am I done? Wait, three, four. Wait, no, there's no four. So, um, if we press the right button and go with our character select is equal to three, we want it to loop back to the beginning, and we want it to go to zero, So, or the first player. So that's our code so far. That's all we need in this object. So there we have it for that object. Now let's create the arrows really quick. Now this is just a bonus. It's not necessary. I'll call obj underscore arrow underscore right. I'll just fast forward, skip past this part really quick. Just do it. I'll show you it. Okay, so here's all I did. I just made it look a little decorative. In the create event, I just put image speed is zero, image index is zero, so it starts off as a green arrow. If you don't know, it has two sub-images, one where it's green and one where it's red. Red is when you're pressing the corresponding direction, so in this case, I'll press right and it'll turn red. So, when you press the right button, image index is equal to one, image speed is zero. Release right, image speed is zero, image index is one, zero. So, let me just show you what the room will look like. Set up my character select screen. So let's put the arrow here. Let's put this here. It's a little big. Add the other arrow. Wait, no, wrong arrow. The right arrow. Wait. And that's all it's going to look like. So let me show you what it'll look like really quick. Okay, so here's all it's going to look like. I press the right key, it changes, switches between characters. The tutorial is not done yet. We haven't added the actual characters. Character select part. 
This will be implemented in part two, but so far the basic part works. The switching between characters and whatnot. So this has been an original Retry This production. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, watch part two. It'll be in the description and the video response. So.